ConocoPhillips will buy Concha Resources in a nearly $10 billion all-stock deal. Uh, shares of Conoco down fractionally, Concho up fractionally. There could be a lot more of this to come. A recent Kansas City Fed survey found that more than half of energy firms predict a jump in deal activity as the future for oil gets bleaker. ConocoPhillips CEO Ryan Lance actually mentioned this instability as a reason for the Concho deal. We recognize it's going to go up, it's going to go down. OPEC, what does they do? What do the Russians do? What does the U.S. Uh, U.S. unconventional do? That's all a price signal. But what we've created here is something that can operate through the cycles and embrace the kind of volatility that we know is going to happen in this business, and it's completely unpredictable. Here to drill down on this deal and who might be next, Paul Sankey is Sankey Research Lead Analyst. Paul, it's good to see you. The last time we talked, I think we were debating how uh, negative oil prices could go. So obviously the environment's better in that regard. But what does today's deal tell you? How significant is it? Well, I think some of the clients are disappointed that we really have the best player, one of the best, say, let's say, certainly top five players in the Permian, an independent concho selling for a relatively mild premium at you know levels that are, are obviously very depressed both in terms of the oil market uh, but also share prices so you know i wouldn't say that everyone's thrilled that this is happening but i think that the responsible people in the room believe that consolidation is the right move and ultimately these are two very good companies that are combining to make a better company which ultimately is a positive so I believe it's about a 15 percent premium. Is that right? And it's also interesting to see the muted share price reaction of both companies, probably the rest of the sector as well. Right. Um, why do you think Concho was willing to unload itself at only a 15 percent premium? And what does that tell us about the way the rest of the deals might look? Yeah, I mean, you're, you're right. Certainly, in fact, the 15 percent premium was before the deal was leaked, which happened essentially over the course of last week. So. Uh, the premium is ultimately a around where everyone thought it would be, but not more. Um, so that's, you know, really the big question is, is why would Con Concho sell is exactly as you highlight. And there was some reference made by Tim Leach, the CEO of Concho, that essentially this new world that we're entering where you've got to run for cash return to shareholders, uh, you know, simply is too difficult for these independents to do because they have such high decline rates in their underlying production. He mentioned a 40% underlying corporate decline rate, believe it or not, in their oil production. So essentially, they're forced to constantly reinvest very rapidly, and that makes it very hard to generate cash return, dividends, et cetera, to shareholders. So that's really a fundamental problem. The history of the industry was that uh, you grew, you grew, you grew, and then you sold it to ConocoPhillips. So it kind of, you know, the strategy <laughs> kind of worked. The problem is that there's no appetite for big premiums anymore, and, and that's fundamentally pretty negative. So finally, what would you tell investors? What, what would your picks in the sector be right now? Well, there's a lot of interest around EOG. I mean, are they going to deal? There was even a really bad, poor rumor on Friday that's caused the late spike that maybe it was getting taken over. EOG, I always think, is actually the best company, but it has issues with federal lands. Uh, we like uh, Pioneer, PXD, which has got the right strategy and thinks it can make it happen, this cash return strategy with low growth. Uh, those are two good Permian names. Uh, takeover potential with Parsley. Possibly Diamondback. But generally speaking, the Permian is a great place to invest. Uh, we just need to get oil demand, particularly jet fuel demand, back. And we think that the world will be surprised by how much oil we use and how difficult it is to replace in the balance. We're pro replacing it, but we think yeah. it's going to be way harder than the Green New Deal suggests. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.